Guys, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Why is this making a noise? In this video, I'm going to show you 15 tips, tricks, and hidden features for all my glorious Samsung Galaxy S9 users. Yes. <laughs> if you are new to my channel, I have done many a tip, trick, and hack video. I'll have them linked in the cards or down below in the description box. You know how it is. Importantly, stay until the end of the video because that is where I will share the big boy, the chief, the king of the castle, most majestic tip I have. And you're not gonna wanna miss it, okay? But yeah, guys, feel welcome to tickle that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, but let's get into the video. Okay, first up, number one is pop-up windows. So let's just say for instance, you're on YouTube and you decide, hmm, I want to rather make this a pop-up window. All you do is then swipe down diagonally across your screen and you will have a pop-up window of YouTube. What's really awesome is you can move the pop-up all over the place. You can make it slightly wider. You can make it slightly longer. Really, you can do anything with this pop-up window and move it anywhere with on your screen. Creating the pop-up window like that, however, can be a little bit tricky, so there is another way to do it. You can simply click the Recents icon right over there, and then simply click and hold down on the app which you'd like the pop-up window to appear, and drag and drop it into that blue box. And bam, the app will pop up within the window, just as you see here. If you'd like to minimize the pop-up window, you simply click on that icon, and it'll just create a floating icon that you can move all over your screen, and if you want to reopen the pop-up window, you simply click on it and it'll open. You can also do this with multiple apps. So here I'm opening Spotify into another pop-up window and now I have two windows. This is great for running things at the same time and is super nifty. How you activate pop-up windows is simply by going into settings. Once there, you simply click on advanced features. From there, you'll click on multi-window so as you can see there, you can choose to toggle on or off these pop-up window settings. Okay, edge screen notifications are glorious. This is what it looks like when you receive a notification. There's this circulating light that goes around the edge of your screen. It is just so beautiful and very eye-catching as well. To activate the edge screen notifications, simply head over to your settings. Once there, click on display and then scroll down until you see edge screen. Simply select edge screen, and then here you can choose to toggle on or off settings. But obviously we want edge lighting on. If you click on it, it'll open even more settings. And then if you click on edge lighting styles, you can customize it even further. So here are different effects. You get a basic effect, glitter effect, glow effect. You can also change the colors simply by clicking on that color wheel and then choose whatever color your heart desires. This is your phone, guys. Make it awesome. On to number three, instant paired split screen apps. So some of you may not know, but there's an edge screen menu here. It is super nifty and super convenient. But what you may not know is you can have instantly paired split screen apps. So as you can see here, this one is a shopping list at the bottom for my Samsung Notes, and above that is a calculator. So as I go shopping, I can just calculate the totals, cross off my items, and it's so, so helpful. Another example at the top here is an exercise app and Spotify. I like to toggle through my music while I'm exercising. Again, this is so helpful. So in order to create these instant paired split screen apps, you're gonna open up the edge screen and click on that settings icon. Then select the edit button. And finally, you will see this window. All you do is click on create app pair and then choose which apps you'd like to pair. So I decided to choose maps and then Spotify because I love listening to music while navigating to my destinations. Then all you do is click the done button and then the pair will automatically appear on your edge screen menu. What you can then do is choose to remove any applications or move them around by simply dragging and dropping. Can you guys do this or maybe this? 
possibly even this. This, guys, is fingerprint gestures, and it's pretty nifty. You can check your notifications with just one teeny tiny little swipe on the back of your phone. Let me show you how it's done. In your settings menu, you're going to click on advanced features, and right over there, you see finger sensor gesture. Simply toggle that on or off, and if you click on it, a couple of other extra settings will open up for you. And here's how it looks when you swipe down on the fingerprint sensor. It's literally just a simple swipe across the fingerprint sensor, down or up, to display or hide the notifications. Did you know you can customize folder colors and use emojis? So in this example, I wanted to make a transport folder. So you simply drag and drop an app over another and it automatically creates a folder. You can also add apps by clicking on the add app button at the bottom there and then scroll through whichever other apps you wanna add. So this is a tracking app that I wanted to add. And then finally, I quickly added the last transportation app. Once in there, you select enter folder name and I chose to use little taxi emojis. I thought I would use three, and then I just typed in transport. From here, if you click on that little white dot on the right-hand side, you can actually click on the color wheel and choose from a whole bunch of different colors. Literally, the possibilities are endless. So because of the taxi emojis and taxis are yellow, I decided to go with a bit of a yellow shade. I thought it just suited perfectly. You can also change the transparency of the folder and also the lightness or darkness. Once complete, this is what your custom folder will now look like. I dragged and dropped it over to my home screen. And right next to that, you can see I've created a shopping folder. So this has got Amazon and Take A Lot in it. I've got an editing folder with all my editing apps in it. So I really love this nifty little customization feature. Hilariously, we all want bigger screens, but with the bigger screen, it's a little bit harder to get to some apps. So how you can take care of reaching all your apps with one hand is simply by clicking the home button three times. Then the entire screen will downsize and it'll be super easy to access any app with just your thumb. And if you're left-handed, you can choose to change the orientation just by clicking on that button. And to make it full screen again, all you do is click on the outer open space. To enable this gesture, simply go into settings and click on advanced features. Once there, you will see one handed mode. You can toggle it on and off, or if you click on it, there'll be a couple extra settings. So you can choose between doing a gesture or clicking a button. All right, secure folders. Do you guys have any secrets you like to keep on your phone? Well, now you can do it with secure folders. So here's an example. I've got very, very secret info on my Samsung Notes. And in order to put this under my secure folder, you simply click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and then select lock. It'll automatically lock that folder and if anyone tries to access it, it'll ask for either the device fingerprint or a pin. Another example is putting pictures in your secure folder. So if I wanted this to be hidden, I'd click on those three dots in the top right hand corner and say move to secure folder. And now within the gallery under secure folder, you can see my hidden pictures. This is something that needs to be activated. So under settings, click on lock screen and security, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And where you see security folder, simply click on that. It'll prompt you for a password. And here you'll see a bunch of different settings. And again, the option to toggle this on or off. Do you sometimes get the claw when trying to take a selfie? It can be so hard trying to click the shutter button when you've got a big phone with a big screen. So luckily with the Galaxy S9, we can fix all that. You can just simply move the shutter button anywhere on the screen, it's amazing. You just hold down on the shutter button, drag it anywhere you want and drop. It's literally that simple, but do be careful not to hold the shutter button for too long, otherwise you'll take a billion selfies of yourself. But yeah, I really love this one and I think Samsung definitely had the user in mind when creating this little function slash feature. On to left and right handed modes. Let's just say you wanted to change the orientation of the navigation bar because perhaps maybe you're left-handed or just prefer it the other way around. Simply head on over to your settings and click on display. 
Once in display, scroll down until you see navigation bar. You click on that and over here you will firstly be able to change the color of the navigation bar and then right here at the bottom where it says button layout, if you click on that it will ask to change the orientation. So as you can see here the navigation is changing as I select the different option. And it's that simple for any of my lefties out there, this is the right way to change the navigation bar. <laughs> Multi-select. Say you're in your gallery and you have a bunch of pictures. What you would usually do is select one, click on the delete icon, then confirm the delete and go on to the next one. It's quite a laborious process. What you can do instead is simply hold down on one image and drag. Guys, look at how it selects multiple images and you can do this in patches just as you see here. Once done, you simply hit the delete button and it's that simple. What you can also do is drag and move these images to folders or copy and paste them to different albums. It's really, really nifty and like I said, a huge time saver. Toggling open apps is a nice way to navigate between everything that is open on your device. If you click the recents button in the bottom left hand corner, as you can see here, it's usually in a thumbnail view. It can be a little bit cluttered and you can't exactly see what's going on. So if you click on those three dots in the top right hand corner, you will see the list view option. Simply click on that and it'll squash the apps into this really nice list view. And to change it back, you simply click on those three dots again and select thumbnail view. Do you guys have a couple nosy friends or family members? Kind of like when you're trying to show them just an image or a funny meme and they end up taking your phone and going through all your pictures, checking out some messages. They do like this whole interrogation on your phone. So you can stop them by simply pinning an app, which means they can't go anywhere else on your phone because you've secretly pinned that exact app or picture to your phone. Let me show you what I mean. Say you want to show someone a pancake recipe. I have one here in my Samsung notes, but I don't want this person to go anywhere else on my phone whatsoever. What you do is tap on the recent icon and your most recent app may have a pin option. Select the pin and it'll then pin the app to your device. The person using the phone can now only navigate within that app, but they cannot go anywhere else on your phone. They can try and press the back button, they can try and press the home button or the recents button and it will literally do nothing. However, it will prompt you to exit the screen by simply holding your two fingers down on the back and recents button at the same time. But then what it'll do is take you to the home lock screen and then of course they can't access your phone without your fingerprint or pin. This is the first device I've ever owned that not only operates in portrait mode, but also landscape. Everything works exactly the same, however, all within landscape mode. You can also still take advantage of split screen apps by toggling on the recents button and selecting that very icon. It's really versatile and there is a lot you can do still in landscape mode, like the pop-up windows. What's also cool is how some apps adjust to the landscape mode. So Spotify here has completely adjusted, so is the settings. However, some apps do not adjust like Instagram. This needs to be enabled within the settings section. So under display, all you need to do is click on home screen and from there, toggle on portrait mode only or toggle it off. Here is an example. If portrait mode is on only, it will not toggle to the landscape mode. And if you pop it on, the bam you've got landscape mode back. Back attack. Making quick gifts on your phone is another awesome hidden feature. So let's say you're watching a YouTube video or someone's Instagram stories and you want to capture it in a GIF format. All you do is you head on over to the edge screen menu and you tap on this smart select animation. It'll then prompt you with this little window and you can move it around, change how big it is, change the dimensions, and then you hit record. What it'll do is start recording exactly what is within that little window for up to 15 seconds, you choose the time, and it'll automatically create a GIF. You can save it and then from there, post it to your friends, post it on WhatsApp, on Instagram stories. And then as you can see here in my gallery is the GIF that I just created. 
Finally, what I would dub the best tip, trick, slash hidden feature is dual Bluetooth. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> this one excites me. In my right hand, I hold a JBL Clip 3 Bluetooth speaker. And in my left hand, I have a JBL Go 2 Bluetooth speaker. The Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, yes, can pair to both these speakers and play music at the same damn time. It's honestly amazing, guys, and I love that you can connect media through these two speakers, including Bluetooth headphones. Hello! So let me show you guys how speaker pairing is done via dual Bluetooth. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure your first Bluetooth speaker is on as well as your second Bluetooth speaker is on. Once on, you're going to slide the notifications panel down and tap and hold on the Bluetooth icon. It'll prompt you to turn on Bluetooth, so of course toggle it on. And then if you select those three dots in the top right hand corner, you will see dual audio. Select that, toggle it on, and you are ready to pair these beasties up to your device at the same time. Simply click back and then select the first speaker. So I'm selecting JBL Clip 3, and then I select the JBL Go 2. It's literally that simple, guys. Now just head on over to your favorite music streaming app and enjoy the beautifulness that is dual audio. If you guys enjoyed this video please feel more than welcome to subscribe and like and don't forget to check out my other hidden features videos right over here i'm sure you'll love them guys just click on one of these but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one toodles